two miles an hour, these fish can really pull. All right, I think he's coming up. Oh yeah, too cool. Absolutely love it. Well, there we go. Beautiful Malax walleye. It's got that little green Malax tint to him they get out here. Awesome. What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. We are inside right now, but I wanted to film this video before I sit down and edit a whole bunch of spring walleye content from the boat. Been on the water for several days now and that uh, feels good. Caught a ton of walleyes, got some great content coming. We are officially into the season. That first video we did in the Mississippi was like, oh, it feels good to be back. Now after fishing for a whole bunch of days, it feels amazing. I am back in the groove. Life has been restored. Life is good. We're catching fish from a boat. Can't complain too much. And a lot of good spring walleye fishing content on the way. But um, along with spring fishing, the other thing that happens is ordering spring gear, um, kind of gearing up for the oncoming season. And I am getting a whole bunch of stuff in the mail that I'm ordering, um, fishing gear. Um, a lot of it pertains to spring, but really I'm ordering stuff for the whole course of the season. But this is kind of a question we get asked a ton when it comes to uh, you know the, our content. And a lot of, I always say this, a lot of the videos we film on this channel are based on questions that we see um, in the comments section. And a lot, in a lot of ways, you guys kind of steer the direction that this channel goes for the most part. Especially because we want the information to be very useful for you guys. So like I said, one question we get asked a ton is about trolling rods, trolling equipment, trolling gear. And uh, if there's one aspect of walleye fishing where maybe a lot of people Jig fishing is probably number one, right? We all probably jig fish if you've walleye fished. Trolling is probably one of those things where it's a smaller um, amount of people that do that versus just the standard jig fishing, which is perfectly fine. But trolling is obviously a great way to catch walleyes and it's probably newer to a lot of people like I talked about. So there's a lot more questions there, right? And one of the big ones is trolling rods. And if you are new to trolling or if you just want to kind of amp up on your trolling equipment or stuff like that, um, this would be a great video for you. So what I have in front of me are the trolling rods, which I'll be running this year. And I actually got to play around with them last year. Great rods, uh, but what I really want this video to be about is how if you are gonna get into trolling, or, or like I said, revamp your trolling spread, lengths and actions that you should be looking for just to kind of strategically um, fit what you're gonna do. Are you gonna be a lead core guy? Are you gonna be pulling boards? Are you gonna be pulling a lot of um, down rods, stuff like that? And are you gonna stay retroll one rod up? You know, if you're one rod per person, so you can't really run a real big spread. And that's kind of what we're gonna cover a lot in this video. Rods that fit certain needs and uh, you know, rods that fit a number of different needs and what those are. And if you're gonna equip yourself for trolling, um, the rods that you should be looking at. So. I got these in the mail today. Wanted to do this before I kind of got them all out and used them a bunch. But these are the brand new, this is the Genesis series by 2B Fishing. And uh, they are making some phenomenal trolling rods. I got to play with them last year. And uh, they make three of them, right? Three trolling rods. And we'll start with probably the one that most, you guys are gonna see the most of me using. And probably the one that you guys are going to use the most as well. And I have not yet taken this one out of the packet. Now this is an, I'll link all this stuff down below if you guys wanna check it out. Um, so you guys can follow it right to the website, check them out and stuff like that. But uh, this is the eight foot six telescoping um, Genesis 2B fishing trolling rod here. And they kind of tape up the telescoping portion here. But the nice part about a rod that telescopes, if you're not familiar with that is, and the second you're gonna hear, it'll slide right out of the blank. So like in my boat, hauling around eight and a half foot, nine foot rods and longer, it gets to be a pain. Due to the, it's hard to get them in a lot of storage lockers, right? Well, this rod and all telescoping rods will fold down into the handle. So one rod compartment in my boat, I could fit eight and a half. So normally I put my spinning rods in that one. And that the other, and that's kind of my front bow one. The other one runs along the side of my boat and that one's a little bit shorter and I can only fit eight footers in there. So telescoping rods, as you can see, they extend like that right there, which makes it awesome. Um, for fitting in your storage units, right? Your storage lockers in your boat, your rod lockers. So this is an eight foot six telescoping rod. Now this rod, the big thing here, we might have to do a different camera angle so you can like you can see these rods the way they load up. But this is gonna be an awesome planer board rod. You control this as a down rod as well, but in a planer board rod what you want is you want a softer tip and a softer, a little bit soft of a midsection too, but you want it to be stiff enough to hold boards. What you don't want out of a planer board rod is a rod that when you're trolling, the weight of that board just folds up the whole rod. You also don't want a rod that's so stiff that when it's holding the board, it's very straight, but when a fish bites, it also doesn't bend a lot. So you want kind of that in between between those two, right? And this rod's perfect. It's got a softer tip on it, so it loads up. It's got a little bit more backbone through the middle of it, 
but it's got plenty of load when you hook up on a fish where that thing's gonna have plenty of load into the rod, which is very key for trolling. Whether you're trolling spinner rigs or crankbaits, um, you want a rod that loads up a lot. And think about this. Think about if every time you fought, caught a fish when you were jig fishing, you were driving away from that fish at a mile to two miles an hour, right? And it takes, that's a lot of force on that fish, especially on a bigger fish. So you want a rod that can absorb that load without pulling hooks out of the fish. And that is exactly what this does. Now, like we talked about, this is probably the most common one I'm gonna use. And that's because I fish ma majority of my time in the state of Wisconsin, where I can run three rods uh, a, a guy. So a lot of times I'm running, pulling big planer board spreads of either six rods if I got one other person with me, or nine rods if I got um, you know two people with me a lot of times. And that's all fitting, you know, if you're fishing a, you know, 800 acre northern Wisconsin lake, you're probably not going to pull nine rods. There's not enough room to maneuver and stuff like that. But a lot of the Great Lakes fishing we do, a lot of our fishing we do on lakes that are, you know, five, six, seven thousand acres and bigger, we do a lot of, of large spread uh, planer board fishing. And whether you're trolling crankbaits uh, um, or, uh, you know, whatever you're doing, whether it's spinner rigs, planer boards, or down rods, this is going to be a great option for you. Another thing to think about is when you're running spreads with planer boards and uh, or you're trying to stack lines on your boat, whether you're fishing like four down rods um, and doing something like that, or if you're pulling six, six planer board rods, one thing to think about is you have to have a long rod, especially when you start getting to your outside of your spread, because the farther that goes out, if you're running a short rod, what's going to happen is that line is going to be very parallel to the water. And what you really don't want to happen is for that line to be in, dipping into the water before it reaches your planer board. So one thing I'll do, these rods at 8.6 is kind of the perfect length for this. It's not bulky to maneuver around the boat. It's not hard if you're fishing by yourself to net a fish you know, with a longer net while you're still in the boat. Uh, and uh, it's, it's just a great all around length. But having a longer rod, what you can do is a lot of times my rod holders are set like this. So my farthest towards the back rod, I'll have it at an elevation like this in a rod holder, right? My farthest towards the front rod will be on an elevation closer to vertical, right? And that stacks my lines. So I'll have one line going out like this, one line going out like that, and one line going out like this. And that stacks my rods. Obviously your tallest rod will go out to the farthest planer board. And that's how you, you kind of effectively run a larger spread. And an eight foot six rod gives you plenty of room to kind of tweak this thing, depending on which angle you put it at, to run multiple lines. And for me, the boat I fish out of, this is a great option. It's just kind of my all around planer board rod and uh, the trolling rod that I will be using definitely the most this season. Um, but there is other options as well. So kind of keep that in mind. You know, if you're looking at running planer board rods, um, or kind of outfitting yourself with you know trolling rods most of the time especially your planer board rods you're going to be looking at lengths of like eight feet plus most of the time right so the other rod on the far other end of the spectrum here this is a shorty rod and this is a lot of times what guys will talk about as an inside lead core rod this is a five foot three i believe is the length on it and this rod was an absolute blast to play with uh last year we pulled it both with planer boards and we pulled it with lead core now the difference between like an eight and a half foot rod is you have a lot of room in that rod to load sections of it up to play a, to fight a fish out right in a five and a half foot rod you don't so that eight foot rod you can have a lot of play in the tip and then a stiffer backbone and these shorter rods, what you need is a rod that's gonna be much more moderate throughout because you can't get just enough load in the last foot of this rod um, to compensate for how much load you need to fight a fish. What is this rod gonna be great for? Well, one of the things we already mentioned right now is uh, your inside lead core rod. Now, when you're fishing lead core, it gets more difficult to run boards, and most of us probably run lead core straight down, obviously, without boards. So what that means is to run multiple lead core rods off a boat, um, you know, especially like three, four plus lead core rods, what you end up doing is what I call stacking lines. And that's a lot of times where you might have a short rod like this, kind of tweaked at an angle slightly backwards off the back of your boat. And then you might have a longer rod like this going straight out the side. So you can still run multiple rods out the same side of your boat uh, without having planer boards. And that's kind of key for doing this. And that's really what this rod's designed for. It's also a great inside board rod, which is what I've been using it for this spring and uh, last fall a little bit as well. And there's plenty of beef in this rod to run a board on, which is really key. A lot of your short lead core rods, they're gonna be so flimsy because you want a flimsy rod when you're running lead core that it's not gonna be strong enough to fight that fish with a board on. You're gonna feel like overworked, so to speak. Where this rod, it's got plenty of beef if you wanna run it as an inside board rod. 
It's gonna be a great lead core rod, which is kind of what it's designed for, which is why it has these kind of larger bulky guides on there so it can fit lead core and your lead core knots and or swivels through it. It's camera's not gonna focus, but um, a, lot, a lot of times lead core, when you seam it to your leader, which a lot of guys will run like a 15 to 30 foot leader on lead core, um, you either gotta tie a bulky knot in there or a lot of times a small swivel, which doesn't like to come through a lot of smaller guides, but um, all of these rods, you can, you can get that knot and swivel through. So, like I said, gonna be a great down lead core rod. Could be a great inside rod without a board as well because it's short. And uh, you know, let's say you're even just a guy who trolls with mono on everything, which 99% of the time is what I do. What I'm about to start doing is loading up reels with some 12 pound mono here. But um, you can run multiple rods up the same side of the boat without planer boards as well. A lot of times planer boards are too complicated for guys. They don't, they just don't want to go there, which is fine. You can be very efficient covering different depths of water with different baits without planer boards as well. But what you're gonna have to do is stack lines and you're gonna need several different rod lengths, like a long rod maybe, and then an inside short rod like this. And so there's two, like I said, there's two ways I'll use this rod. One will be a board rod, one will be a down rod. And uh, a lot of times when I'm trolling this as a down rod with lead core, what I might even do is run it straight vertical off the back of my boat at a slight angle like this. Let's say this is like the level of my boat. I might run it like this and this lead core will kind of load the tip up like that. And then your, your fish, you know, you'll obviously see him, he'll be doing more of an action like that when he does bite. So that's how I use this rod. It's always gonna be this rod. You'll never see this rod in any position in my boat except for the back corners of the boat. That's because this is an inside rod. It's either gonna be ran as a down rod or it's gonna be run as an inside board rod and that's gonna be my closest bait to the boat right there. So very versatile rod. Probably less you guys have this rod than any of these other types of rods right here. Um, and that is because, you know, it, it used to be kind of a one-dimensional deal. Guys only would use these rods for lead core, but this rod, like I said, very multi-purpose rod. And uh, I think it's really gonna be an underrated setup to kind of clean up the spread and a very manageable rod if you know you're fishing by yourself. Now, the other end of the spectrum here, we have the longest one, and this is a two-piece. And like I said, the goal with all, pretty much all rods is to be able to fit them in your rod locker. Like I was just down while I fished in the last several days now, and we had a full lineup of spinning rods in the boat and a full lineup of trolling rods in the boat. And I hate when rods are just openly laying out on the deck, a whole bunch of rods at the time. I am guilty of it, but the older I get, the more I like to have a clean boat. It's probably a good thing, but you can fit all these rods in any storage locker. So this is a two piece rod, and that's because this rod is 11 and a half feet long. Now this is your long rod. Now why would you need a, a trolling rod that's 11 and a half feet long? Well, part of what we kind of already talked about here for stacking lines. Now this rod has two things you're pretty much gonna do with it. This is always gonna be, if you're buying this rod, your most outside farthest out rod. If you're trolling this on a planer board spread, this is gonna be your farthest planer board out. And the reason and it's always gonna be closest to the bow of your boat, the way you're setting this up. And uh, it's great, especially when you get, like I said, running a ton of lines. The longer your rod is, the more of an angle you can get, and it gets around those other lines. If you're running too many lines with all the same rods at all the same angle going up, you're gonna have lines rubbing and touching. It's gonna be awkward and bad. You don't want that to happen. So having very varied length rods with one long rod on your farthest out is a, a great way to do it, right? In big waves, the other thing that happens is, when you, especially when you start getting you know three, four plus foot waves a lot of times, is it gets difficult to get the line up high enough to get to your outside board because what'll happen is that the waves will start eating the line um, that goes down to your farthest rod out. So being able to get a rod way up in the air and uh, you know make sure that that angles are really like that keeps that from happening a lot and keeps your spread running a lot cleaner. The other thing which I've been doing a bunch with this, especially last fall when I was using it, was running it as my outside lead core rod. And what that does, it gives me, allows me to run a bunch of lead core rods at the same time and spread them out farther. Now, if you're running like seven foot rods, you can uh, get away with you know stacking lead core rods, but what happens is they end up being all very close to each other. We're having a five foot, five foot three rod and then an 11 and a half foot rod. I can spread baits out a long ways without running planer boards, right? So it's very effective with doing this. Now, this rod is long, so it definitely helps to have two guys in the boat when you're fighting a fish. You know, most of the time we're trolling, we probably do have somebody else with, but having one guy reeling and one guy netting the fish is obviously helps a lot with a rod of this length. But this fits a very specific tool as well um, with, a, you know, actually a couple of different applications. One, if your guy doesn't want to run boards and you want to spread lines out a long ways. Two, if you're fishing, probably a big time, big water guy and you want to spread boards very cleanly, give me a great rod and a lead core rod and uh, running off the side as your farthest out rod, right? 
So that's kind of deal with that. And this one, same thing. It's a, it's a long rod, but it loads up very, very well in the midsection. And you could fight a huge fish on this rod if you wanted to, because you have so much spongy room. And a lot of times, the longer the rod you go, almost impossible to lose a fish because you have so much load in that rod. And all three of these rods are obviously designed as trolling rods. And they're designed to load up very well in that midsection and hold fish very well. Like I said, it's easy to put way too much force on a fish um, when you're trolling, especially when they get by the boat. And let's say you're reeling that fish in for a long ways on a spinner rig and that rod's kind of like this. They have that, the walleyes have that notorious reputation of the second they get in the prop wash when you're trolling, they do that huge run and dive. And that's where it's important for that rod to go from right here to have a lot of give to go like that so those hooks do not pull out. So um, these are the three trolling rods I'll be running this year. Um, they're all great rods. I can put my stamp of approval on them. If you guys want to check out any of them, I'll link them all down below. Um, but I figured I wanted to do this video to give you guys some clarity, especially if you're new to trolling, um, on what you should kind of be looking for. And this isn't a pitch like, hey, just go out and buy these rods. Um, they are great rods, but if you're trying to pick up some trolling rods, <coughs> oh, I've got a dry throat today. But if you're gonna go pick up some trolling rods and you wanna set up your boat right, look for the, the, the qualities which I mentioned in this video to kind of fit your needs as a troller. So I appreciate you guys watching. I gotta unpack my boat real quick, edit a bunch of walleye film. We'll get those videos out soon, don't worry. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.